Hello and welcome to our unit on stars and galaxies. It is a four day unit of notes. Make sure you have your headphones plugged in and you're ready to listen. Feel free to pause this video anytime you need to write or go back and review something. Here we go. All right, our unit is stars and galaxies. Topic is our sun. Our sun is a star. Day one of four. Today you will learn the definition of a star. You will learn the processes of fusion in the sun's core. You'll be able to distinguish between the inner and outer layers of the sun, as well as some of the features the sun has. All right, for your quick write, what do you think fuels the sun? A big tank of gas, nuclear energy? Remember, these are just what you think for five easy points. How long do you think it takes light to reach Earth from the sun? Okay, light is energy. And speaking of energy, what kind of energy does our sun give off or release? Okay, all right, here we go. Our sun. Our sun is just like many other stars you see in the night sky. Okay, the sun is an average middle-aged star made up of an enormous ball of hydrogen helium gas or plasma, which is just a really hot gas, producing energy by fusing hydrogen, the lightest element in our universe, into helium, the next heaviest element in the core of the sun. Okay, very important. In the process, energy is given off in the form of light or radiation. Okay, so the sun gives off energy in the form of light or radiation from fusion in the core. All right, well, what is radiation? There's different types of radiation. Some of these you're familiar with, like radio waves, which your cell phones operate on. Radio waves are given off by the sun. These are long wavelength waves and create the static you get on your radios and TVs, okay? Or the static you hit. If you've ever just had your, been flipping through radio stations, that static you hear is radio waves given off by the sun, okay? So the next type of radiation is infrared or heat waves. The sun gives off heat waves, which have a little bit shorter wavelength. Heat waves or radiation from the sun is what controls our weather. So the heat that we get from the sun dictates our weather. Okay, so after infrared, the kind us humans love because we can see is visible light radiation. That's right, light, which we use to see, is radiation. So visible light from the sun has an even shorter wavelength. So light waves are the only type of radiation we can see. Okay, and... Even more dangerous than light are what we call ultraviolet. We're getting into shorter wavelength um, radiation, which is more dangerous. So too much UV radiation can cause skin cancer. Okay. Luckily, we have an ozone layer, which protects us from most of the ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Okay. So even more dangerous than UV rays are X-rays. Okay. Due to their short wavelength, x-rays are even more hazardous to your health. This is why doctors put a lead vest over you when you get x-rays for an injury. They don't want to expose you to too many x-rays. And finally, even more dangerous than x-rays is gamma rays. Gamma radiation has the shortest wavelength of all and is therefore the most dangerous. Just small amounts of gamma radiation can be lethal. Luckily, not too much hits Earth. All right, so... What is a star? Okay, that is the question that goes in your question section. Everything underneath the question goes in your answer section. Okay, read the passage. Use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Be sure to record these words at the top of your notes in the answer bank section for credit. Please pause this now while you write. Okay, the inner layers of the sun. What do we know about the sun? We've got the good old core, the radiative zone, and the convection zone. These are the inner layers. Let's learn a little bit about the core. The core lies at the heart of the sun and is 15,600,000 degrees Celsius. Pretty hot stuff. The nuclear process known as hydrogen fusion occurs in the core. During hydrogen fusion, four hydrogen combine or smash together to form one helium nucleus, releasing tremendous amounts of energy. 
Okay, so four hydrogen equals one helium plus energy. Well, the core is where nuclear fusion takes place. Let's zoom in and see what happens here. Okay, in the core, there are hydrogen atoms right now in our sun. These hydrogen atoms, okay, are under tremendous pressures and temperatures. So the pressures and temperatures are so high that fusion can take place. Fusion occurs when four hydrogen atoms, the lightest element in our universe, combines to form one helium atom, a heavier element, okay? And in the process, energy is released in the form of light and radiation, okay? So a new element is created in our sun. Right now, our sun is creating converting hydrogen into a new element, helium. So what is fusion? Once again, write the question down in the question section. Everything under the question goes in your answer section. Read the passage. Use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence and record that word in your answer bank. Please pause this now while you write. Okay, the radiative zone. Moving out from the core is the radiative zone. In the radiative zone, energy radiates outward from the core in the form of light and radiation. Okay, it takes light only eight minutes to reach Earth from the sun, but for light to pass through the radiative zone, it may take thousands of years. Why is that? That's because the sun, matter is so dense in the radiative zone that light is trying to escape. It keeps hitting other atoms and it bounces backwards. So as it tries to escape, it keeps running into other atoms and bouncing and zigzagging as it tries to escape. It's kind of like as if you were try to if you were to run through a classroom. If there were no people in the classroom, you could run very quickly. But imagine now in a classroom with say 80 people. Trying to run through a classroom full of 80 people is a lot harder. You're going to bump into people. You may even bounce backwards. Okay? But ultimately, you will make it out, okay? So it, the class is more dense, right? So it takes you longer to get through the classroom. Well, the same thing is true in the radiative zone. The radiative zone is very dense, and it takes light thousands of years to pass through this zone, okay? The temperature is about 8 million degrees Celsius. All right, the convection zone. Out past the radiative zone is the convection zone. Energy moves through this zone by convection, Hot gases rise toward the surface while cooler gases sink back down. It behaves like a giant pot of boiling water. Temperature is 2 million degrees Celsius. Okay, so hot matter rises. Most of us already know that, like a hot air balloon, right? Hot matter rises. As it rises, it cools, and heavy matter sinks. Okay, so it's the convection zone. Okay, let's look at the outer layers of the sun now. We have the photosphere, the surface of the sun, the chromosphere, and way out here, it looks like empty space, is the corona. Okay, well, let's look at the photosphere. It's often called the surface of the sun. Why? Well, it's where light is given off. So the light we use to see comes from the photosphere. When we, you, If you were to look at the sun, you would be looking at the photosphere. Don't look at the sun, though. <laughs> All right, temperatures are around 6,000 degrees Celsius. All right, the chromosphere, out past the photosphere is the chromosphere. Okay, temperatures are around 20,000 degrees Celsius. I don't want you to know too much about the chromosphere except its location in relation to the other layers of the sun. Okay, it's kind of reddish in color. All right, and out past the sun is the corona or crown. It's the largest layer of the sun. Extends millions of kilometers into space. It's the hottest layer of the outer layers. The temperature is about 2 million degrees Celsius. Here in the corona, charged particles leave the, leave the sun's surface, creating what's called a solar wind. So the corona is where the solar wind forms. These are charged particles that shoot off from the sun. Okay. So the corona can only seen be during an eclipse when the moon passes in front of the sun. And voila, corona. And that is when you can see it during a total eclipse. All right. So once again, write down the question, read the passage, use the answer bank to complete the sentences. Okay. Go ahead and pause this while you write.
All right, sunspots. What are sunspots? These are cool, dark areas on the sun's surface. And when I say cool, they're still thousands of degrees Celsius. They're still very, very, very hot. They're just cooler compared to the surrounding portion of the sun. Sunspots can last from a few days to a few months. By studying sunspots, we've discovered that the sun rotates in place. So the sun actually rotates. They represent areas of intense magnetic activity. Well, what's interesting about these sunspots is that they go through an 11-year cycle. Every 11 years, our sun goes through a sunspot cycle. Our sun has periods of sunspot maximums where many sunspots are visible. So if you look on this graph over here, here is a maximum. You had about 200, almost 200 sunspots in the year of, oh, 1956 or so, 1957. And then our sun has periods of sunspot minimums where only a few sunspots are visible. It's kind of like our sun becomes dormant and not very active during these minimums. Like 1964, the whole year of 1964 maybe saw 20 sunspots compared to almost 200 in 1957. So we have a minimum down here and a maximum up here. All right. Another feature our sun gives off is what was called as a solar flare. It's a violent explosion in the sun's atmosphere. They release tremendous amounts of radiation or energy in the form of UV rays, X-rays, and gamma rays. Remember, these are the bad types of radiation. Not good. Okay, these are the kind that can harm us. And then prominences. Prominences are huge arching columns here arching columns of gas on the surface of the sun. They erupt at speeds ranging from 600 to 1,000 kilometers a second. Once again, these prominences give off ultraviolet light x-rays that can reach the earth and cause disruption in radio signals. So if you look right here, here's a big prominence. It's an arch. Okay. Over here too. All right. So what features can be found on the sun? Write the question down, okay? Then read the answer, please, and determine which, which words best complete the sentences by using the answer bank. By now, you should have all your answer banks filled out, all six words, okay? Go ahead and pause this while you write, please. Okay, summarize, please. Be sure you can always write your own, okay, or you can do mine. Okay, once again, use the answer bank. You don't need to record the answer bank words for the summaries, okay? Like I said, you can do mine, or you can go back and look at your notes and write at least four sentences. Okay, pause this video while you complete your summary for 20 points. Remember, do you receive the 20 points? Your summary boxes have to be filled up. Okay.